Proton Pack is not a toy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is not a toy. My name is Matt, and if you're like me, you're still excited over the release of the Ghostbusters Afterlife second trailer that came out last week, and we've already started to see some of the merchandise at shelves. I got a muncher at Target the other day. I've been looking for the mini puffs and little cans, and once I find those, I'll buy a few of those as well. Uh, just an exciting time to be a Ghostbusters fan. Um, I want to start having a lot more Ghostbusters Afterlife content here on the channel. We're, I think, 101 days away from November 11th, which is supposed to be the release date, and I'm excited to be able to, you know, we're in this waiting period where we're trying to get there, but time only goes so fast. So to be able to spend it with you guys and to maybe throw out some different ideas and scenarios based on what we've seen out of the trailers and other information that they've given us and speculate on that and do that as a community. Um, I'm looking forward to that part of it uh, as we have to wait. We're about 14, 15 weeks away. I expect to put a new video out every week so that we can kind of bounce around with some of these ideas that are in our heads. The first one I want to cover is in my reaction video, uh, which I'll have linked in the description if you haven't seen it already. I started off by having some of the questions from the first trailer and things that I was looking for answers for as I viewed the second trailer. And now that we've seen the second trailer, I wanted to go back and see where we did find those answers. So some of the questions that I did pose were, why is the Ecto-1 in Oklahoma? And what we found out was that Egon basically relocated. It appears he was successful in capturing at least one terror dog. Uh, the spectral version that we saw looked like the Sentinel one that's uh, gonna be featured here. Uh, we see it escaping there in the second trailer. Um, but we don't know exactly to what extent uh, he was involved uh, in this and how much he knew. So another question I had was, why was their grandfather assuming Egon there? And this trailer confirms that it was Egon. There's no question which Ghostbuster we're talking about anymore. They said that this is the Spengler family. Jason Reitman came out in his commentary and specifically said well, this is a story of the Spengler family and them discovering who they are in their relationship to the Ghostbusters. So uh, we've seen the underground Gozerian temple and the mine, and uh, Egon obviously was on the trail for this, but how much did he un uh, uncover? How much did he discover? And uh, how much, how deep was he in this before he passed? Another question I had was, did Peter Ray and Winston, were they aware of where Egon was and what he was up to. And while we didn't directly answer that in the uh, trailer, in the second trailer we did see Janine, and I'm thinking, well, if Janine had any kind of connectivity still with the other three surviving Ghostbusters, then there's the possibility that they all knew what was going on, but that one was not explicitly answered here in the trailer. And then also regarding Janine, I was curious whether she was Callie's mother and Phoebe and Trevor's grandmother, and it appears that she was not. The uh, trailer had the one little clip of her uh, speaking to Callie where she refers to Egon as your father. So that answers the one question some of us have had, whether Callie is the daughter of Egon or the daughter-in-law of Egon. It looks like that Egon was her father. Um, Jason Reitman's commentary, it sounds as if Janine was simply being a friend and caring for Egon as he was old and passing away. It doesn't sound like they were ever married or involved any more than that, which still leaves the question of who was Callie's mother? Uh, maybe we'll chase that rabbit more in some of these subsequent videos that I post over the next few weeks. Um, before watching that second trailer, I also asked if we would see any of these following things. Would we see the original Ghostbusters? And we did see Janine, uh, technically not a Ghostbuster, but involved with, with the crew. And then, of course, Ray at the little uh, stinger there at the end at the Ray's Occult bookstore. So no mention or uh, sighting of Winston or Peter yet. Uh, would we see more of Muncher? Yes, we did see a good close-up shot of Muncher while he was being chased by the kids in Ecto-1. Uh, the mini puffs, would we see more of them? 
we saw basically what we had already seen. Uh, there was an extra little part with the umbrella going through one of uh, Minnie Puss' head. Uh, other than that, everything looked like stuff that we had already seen from the Mr. Gruberson clip that was released a couple of months ago. Uh, would we see the kids in uniform? No, in the trailer we did not see that, but on the same day, Hasbro uh, released some pictures of the characters in uniform from the Fright Features and the Plasma Series toy lines uh, and the original Ghostbusters, Ray and Peter and Winston, were also shown as Plasma Series figures in uniform on the same day, which was kind of weird since they weren't shown that way in the trailer, but they kind of spoiled it on the same day by releasing these pictures of these figures in uniform. So a little, I was a little confused by all that and didn't really agree with the uh, schedule of that releasing on the same day like that, but it is what it is. And I also wondered if we would see more of the RTV, the RC trap. And it was shown deploying from the Ecto-1 and rolling and rounding the corner, looking very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing it actually opening up while it's rolling and catching a ghost in motion. That's going to be a cool thing to see in theaters, so I'm excited about that. And then uh, I asked if in the second trailer if it would be more comedic or dramatic, shocking, sentimental. It really turned out to be a little bit of all of those. Uh, we did kind of, in my opinion, have more action. Definitely more ghosts. And I was surprised uh, by the Gazarian mine there. And uh, that was something I had no expectation to see. Uh, I said that the promo material leading up to the second trailer uh, relied heavily on Ecto-1 and wondered if that would continue here in this second trailer. And it was still featured uh, pretty prominently in the uh, second trailer though with the ghosts and the mine, uh, even the YouTube clips and the suggested videos on the sides there which were kind of fun to peek at. Uh, obviously the inclusion of Janine and Ray, those were all just as prominent, if not more, uh, as the Ecto-1 in this trailer. So now I have new questions based on having seen this second trailer and some of the things maybe we can discuss here in the comments, uh, we'll see what you guys think. First one I've already had answered because I was curious there's a little card in there that says this Thanksgiving. And I thought, oh no, it's supposed to come out on November 11th. Did they push it back a couple of weeks? So I reached out to Eric Reich of Ghost Corps and he confirmed that no, it's still coming out on November 11th as planned right now. And so I assume that since Thanksgiving does fall within the theatrical release window, it just made it smart to put that in the uh, trailer to be listed that way. Uh, as I said earlier, another question I had based on this trailer is, if Janine isn't Callie's mother, then who is? Like I said, we can look into that later in some of these subsequent videos that I'll put out. Um, one that I think is interesting is, who is holding the PKE meter? We only see a clip from about this far down. Somebody for just a second or two is holding the PKE meter. Uh, could it be Ray or Peter, Winston, one of the kids, somebody else in the family? Or could it, in fact, be Egon's ghost and the PKE meter is going off because it's detecting himself? That would be cool. I think that would be... That's what well, I wanted to see, uh, that to be the case. And then in the same kind of sequence there in the trailer, we see the smoke. It looks like it's coming down a chimney or something. Uh, is that Egon materializing into the house? before he comes in and then takes on a full body and then picks up the PKE meter. So I don't know, but that's kind of my thought on that one. Uh, also, I'm wondering if Egon is using lights to communicate with his family there in the house. We do see the one light move behind Callie's head and the lights kind of flicker around Phoebe. It looks like it's leading her in a certain direction. Maybe that's way the way that Egon is communicating with them there in the house. Another question I have is what else do they learn about the Ghostbusters from watching these YouTube clips? Um, will we see any of the footage from these suggested videos on there? So the ones where it says, where are the Ghostbusters now? It's got the little Adam Savage clip that's on the bottom of one of them that we could see. 
uh, are the Shandorians in control of the government. Uh, I wonder how many of those that Phoebe's going to click on that we'll get to see actually in the in the theaters when the movie releases. Uh, the big question that a lot of people are asking uh, is that really Gozer that we see coming out of the pit? Um, I don't know. It could be a misdirection. It could be, really be Gozer. It could be a different character altogether. Is Gozer the big bad villain in this movie, or is it leading into something that we haven't seen yet? Uh, I'm wondering how do the terror dogs and Gozer, the mini puffs, Evo Shandor, all things that were in a way connected, like in the first movie, how are they tied together in this movie? Is it in a similar way? Uh, will they repeat the gatekeeper and key master story to open a portal? Uh, I think they got to be careful there because it's almost like Ghostbusters 2 is criticized for following the same beats of the first movie. Uh, if we follow the Gozerian mythology too closely and in the same sequence, then we run into that criticism that it's just repeating the first movie. So I'm interested to see how they'll tie that all together and make it its own. And then at the end, who calls Ray and in what part of the action is this taking place? How deep are the kids in the trouble uh, before they reach out to any, any of the original Ghostbusters? Those are the questions I have now, based on having to seen, having seen the second trailer. Uh, what questions do you have? Do you have any answers for anything that I've posed here, or any suggestions or thoughts? Then go, you know, put those in the comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, this is part of the fun of having to wait, is that we can have these discussions. And like I said, I'll be putting these out uh, pretty much once a week, if time allows. And if you have any ideas for future videos, then post those down there as well. I'll take any suggestions, and if they're something that I have good thoughts about, then possibly make some of those videos as well. Thank you also to the uh, about two dozen of you who have subscribed over the last week since that trailer reaction video came out. I uh, really appreciate it. That's a lot for me to pick up in just a week's time. So thank you for all of you who have been sticking by me and uh, saying nice things and posting uh, friendly comments on my videos. I do really appreciate it and enjoy making these videos for you guys uh, to enjoy and learn things from. So super excited about Ghostbusters Afterlife and what we have coming. Just can't wait for this to hurry up and get here. And I'm excited to be able to spend it with you guys. So I wanna say thank you guys for watching and uh, stick around. We'll have another video within the next week, if not sooner. Peace out.